This program is made possible by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the National Endowment for the Arts. if you grew, grew up in the South, as I did in Atlanta, and as Tom did in Tennessee, if you have never, if one has never lived in the rural South. Planter South. Yeah, Planter South, like we live in now, it's difficult to understand. And it, I felt for a while like I was in a foreign country. The reason I came back here is, well, I graduated from Harvard Law School, and then I went to school in Switzerland and studied international law, and then I'm an only child, so I, I was going to inherit a lot of land, so I came back here. There is a very sophisticated element in this town that travels widely and, and uh, has uh, high levels of education. These would be, you might say, the old aristocratic elements, if I don't misuse the word aristocrat. But, um, honor, feeling that, uh, that they have to do a service, uh, uh, protect the interests of all parties involved. It's like sit back during the 1928s, small, quiet town, with very little trouble. You have to live here for yourself and find out most of them about dogs, because different things happen here. They got a way of making, couldn't, the making it hard for you, couldn't you? You can come off if they want. Lose the home, lose, lose the, the home. car. One or two people on the camera. And what that man said goes. If you took my picture, my family, Okay, my mother would lose her job. She would. Uh, probably my my brother-in-law and all. Anybody come involved with me, with me would suffer something. And they might say, well, we saw this and we heard this and, and we don't need you no more. You'll be going somewhere else with the film and he won't have a job. His folks won't have a job. You mean that you're a nigger? And you're always going to be a nigga. They don't call you. They call you boy. That's what they call you, boy. Right hand dog. And you still got that old boy jab going around. You know, it's about time now. We get tired of that stuff. You get home and get out of it. You know, uh, the majority of the, the school system, like, the majority of the whites go to school over in another county, keep from going to here in Terrell County to school. This is a private school. And back when they're... Terrell High, when they immigrated, most of them come out here. Not all whites go to the school, and I do not always permit all whites to return to it. It is, it is primarily a, uh, an upgrading aspect of education here. 
Well, if you want my honest opinion, I think the average white doesn't want to go to school with blacks. I mean, I don't feel that way because I've been to school with blacks most of my life, but then down here they feel very definitely that they don't want to go to school with blacks and they don't like black teachers. I like Dawson, but Dawson just don't get a black teacher justice. Right, because uh, like, if, 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 if these white people don't take it out on them for, for speaking their opinion or speaking their minds, they're going to take it out on their children or their grandchildren and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right. See, that's what they're afraid of. Because like a couple of weeks ago when uh, these guys was, uh, they were just riding around the car, the police pretended like they thought they were someone else mm -hmm. and just beat them up for mm -hmm. no reason whatsoever. Some hit me in my face just right there and the pistol went right to my head. And I looked over there, went to my brother here and I was trying to push the pistol back. Keep them, you know, because it might have went off. You know, I was scared, you know. And then they put, knocked me up the side of the creek. And when um, the woman had the pistol in my hand, he started putting his arm around my neck and started choking me. And I told him, I said, please, man, leave me alone. They had not beat him. So he was bleeding out the mouth. His face was swollen. His teeth like he had to knock his teeth inside. Well, you know, I supposedly controlled the police. And... They, they are supposedly treat everybody equally. I, that's all I can tell them to do. I can't ride with them. But, you know, I'm a lawyer and I'm a judge and I, I feel very strongly about mistreating anybody. They say they, he fell out the car and broke his jawbone. And you know, he couldn't have broke his jawbone in two places by falling out of the car. You know, they had, they had to whoop him. Does a black man have to be careful about what he says and the way he's moves around here? That's right. That's right. That's right. What might happen if you speak out? Well, it may get, may be like my son. He may get beat up. He may get locked up or something. Someone that's kind of like that. He may do something. They say he do it and he don't be done done it. Do the blacks in Terrell County think they don't have equal justice? I, I don't understand that. I really don't. In what way? Using the law for intimidation, police brutality, arbitrary arrest. Uh, police brutality in that they were beaten or? I, I haven't heard that. I, I don't know how much of it may be exaggerated. And there may be some truth to it. I don't know. But I do know that, that uh, there has not been a black convicted for crime. In this, in this county, in this circuit, for a long, long time. And that, <laughs> that may have something to say about the fact that they get more justice than whites here. In late January 1976, the residents of Dawson learned that Gordon Howell, a local cattle rancher, had been murdered at this small country store. According to Tiny Denton, the owner of the store and the only eyewitness, four black males entered, demanded money, and in the ensuing scuffle, shot Mr. Howell. Within a week, five youths, who were regular customers at the store, were arrested and charged with the crime. Mr. Denton had identified only one of the five, Roosevelt Watson, the alleged trigger man. After a year and a half, the suspects are still awaiting trial. Two have recently been released on bond. Three others remain in the county jail. I, 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 I didn't believe it. I still don't believe it. I never did believe it. I played ball with them and stuff like that. Uh, uh, the guy, they the just wanted to take, you know. Kind of, he, all of them were shy. Well, there's a lot of them that uh, seem to think they've got the wrong ones. And the black community seems to feel, or rather have a pretty good opinion of the ones that they got. Uh, one black fellow that I know real well, and he's a fine, upstanding citizen. He seems to think that they've got a good reputation and all. And I kind of think that he, I mean, I believe in what he says, but I couldn't say whether they're guilty or not. How about the white community? Well, uh, the white community probably, I would imagine most of them feel like they probably did it because they had to have some evidence, I'm sure, to to get arrested and to start with. So, I mean, most of them probably do think that they are guilty. I don't know who he was and what went on and what happened. 
that this time they got my tumor or something they don't know nothing about. That ain't that ain't treated right right there. And they don't know anything about it. Don't even know him. Don't know what went on. I don't, and they don't either. Don't know who he was, no more no what us here to see in the paper. I don't see why they do us like they do, yeah. you know, because they know we're innocent. They know we haven't did anything like that, you know. They know that. Yeah, they know that. They just from hateful people, you know. It seems to be a pattern. What is that pattern? Of um, violence, of doing taking without working for, abusing other people. And a lot of time it's older people, sometimes it's younger people, but it isn't theirs what they're doing. They are infringing on other people's rights. And then they say their rights are being abused when they are held and they're not being abused because first they abused. Well, Will, how long have you been living here in Terrell County? Same with a little boy. Don't know how long, in county, how long I've been here. Where'd you go to school? Down there in South Dunbar Elementary, where I first started. What grade did you quit in? Twelve. Did you learn how to read and write good? No, sir. Can you read and write? No, sir. What writing can you do? You write my name a little bit. How'd you get to the 12th grade? Pairs me up. Kept on passing me up. Did you learn other things in school if you didn't learn reading and writing? Play, learned to play basketball. What about mathematics? Did you learn mathematics? They took me out in mathematics. Why'd they take you out? Put me on another class. I don't know why they took me out. What class did he put you in when he took you out of mathematics? What class there was. What about adding and subtracting and multiplying? Can you do that good? No, sir. Can you do it at all? No, sir. I don't know how to really say it. Say the thinking <laughs> power of the whites and the blacks. To an extent, you have to kind of rule over it. Because, they, I mean, they just want reason things out for themselves. And I know they're able to. Why did all the white kids leave the public schools to go to the academy? Everybody else, all our friends I, are going I, up there. I tell you the what. The blacks didn't even want to go out there to tell how. I've, that's talk, right. I've talked to a bunch of them. And they, they don't and want they to go to our school. We don't want to go to theirs. The white community wanted someone picked up right then and there for that murder at Bridges Crossroads. They didn't want it to take a week or two weeks or whatever. They said, we want someone charged now. At the time, the store owner stated that he couldn't recognize any black subjects because they wore a mask. About a week later, or four or five days later, after the crime had taken place, he changed his story and said, no, they weren't wearing masks, and picked out some suspects that he said committed the crime. He kept changing his story back and forth. Did Mr. Denton know you and Rosebook by name? Yes, he knew us by name. And he called you by your name? Yes. About how many times a week were you in the store charging things and buying things from him? So about three times a week. Did anybody else ever run that store at that time? Did he have any helpers or did he run the store by himself? He ran it by himself. So Mr. Denton would wait on you every time you went in there three times a week? Yeah, so you'll wait on me, you know. And he charged to you? Yeah, he charged things to me. <clears throat> and to Roseville, too? Yes. Y'all ever trade down there, Johnny B? Yeah, my you mother, and Junior? Yeah, my mother and my brother did. You know, they, you know, like, he knew us. He knew us well, you know. This is just kind of the community store there. Yeah. So it ain't any question about Mr. Denton knowing y'all and knowing you well. You know, I ain't, I ain't thought he would do something like that, you know, tell lies on us like that, you know, because he, you know, like, you know, we, we know him pretty good and he knows us, you know. We thought he was all right, you know, we didn't try to pull nothing like that, you know. And then when my father died, uh, 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 
went down, you know, tell all, you know, took, you know, to pay his bill. And then he told me, you know, that don't, you know, I don't worry about my daddy's bill, you know, because, you know, he, he was dead, you know, then the bill was dead or something like that. You know, I went down there, you know, to uh, off to pay my father's bill, you know, or after he had died. Then he told me, you know, that I don't worry about it. You know, that Mr. Denton told me, you know, he told him, said, don't, you know, don't worry about it. Mr. Mr. Denton told you you didn't have to pay your father's bill. Yeah, you know, that's what he told me, said that. I didn't have to pay it because, you know, he, he said, you know, he, he had died and then the bill was dead or something, you know, that's what he told me. He's a good boy. Ain't no two ways about it. They're a good boy. George Poor once owned a small country store similar to the one at Bridges Crossroads. He now sells firewood and often hired Roosevelt Watson to chop wood. I've been knowing him for about, well, three years now. I just don't believe these boys done what they said they done. More or less, me and most of these niggers around here are a pretty good friend. I understand them. I know them pretty well, see. And uh, this old man over there, he was, he was always on to them, afraid they're going to steal or something, something like that, which not a lot of niggers will. You know, a nigger know that it was while to kind of steal a little something. But as far as, like I said, I, I don't... I don't believe the boys would do nothing like that. What about this tank? Well, like I said, uh, he was always the type of man that, uh, well, he kept a pistol laying right around, right on the side of his cash register all damn time. And uh, he was, I don't know, he just seemed like a man that uh, would more or less just, well, he just want some of them niggas to say something to him. I know that's exactly what type of man he is. The sheriff, some of his deputies, GBI agent, were on a dirt road a few hundred yards from the Bridges Crossroads looking for the murder weapon that was supposedly thrown into the swamp. They called me at the police department and asked me to bring my metal detector out to where they were at and help them try to locate the murder weapon. I searched all that morning, couldn't find the weapon anywhere. There was one black juvenile who was a suspect in the case out there at the time. They had him waiting around the swamps trying to locate the weapon, too. That afternoon, the sheriff told Deputy Jack Hammock to take the black juvenile back to Dawson, lock him back up in jail. The black juvenile got in the back of the deputy's car. We left the sheriff and the others at the scene, started back towards Dawson. A few hundred feet before you get into the city limits of Dawson, there's a dirt road that turns back to the right. Jack Hammock turned down that dirt road, went down about 200 yards, and stopped where you couldn't see the highway behind you. We took his pistol, his pistol out, cocked it, put it between the juvenile's eyes, said, OK, nigger, tell me where the weapon is, I'm going to blow your head off. The black juvenile at that time stated he didn't know, that uh, he didn't have anything to do with the crime. Then he told him again. He said, I'm going to blow your brains out if you don't tell me. The black juvenile's eyes got real big, and he started stuttering, which time there was a pickup truck that came up by the vehicle. Jack Hammock turned around, put his pistol down between his legs. The pickup truck went on by, then he turned back around, put his pistol back between his eyes again, said, nigger, tell me where the pistol's at. So we're going to throw you out in these woods beside the car, blow your brains out, and just leave you here. Yeah, pull the truck. My young Terry Crew, I'm gonna, you know, shoot me and all that. So I told him, you know, I didn't have nothing to do with it. So keep on talking about I, yeah, got something to do with it. You know, I thought you finna shoot. The guy that told me ain't dead, that we, we, that chief, that chief, put, that chief said we ought to circumcise him. What were his exact words, Rosemary? Nuts. Tell me how, tell me exactly what he said to you. He was throwing down and cutting his nuts out. He'd tell the crew then to find them going up one. Then the urgent said, let, let the prison run down through the woods and beat him. He'll find them then. The law said that? Yes, sir. Did you believe him? I was scared all of them. They wasn't mad at me. 
Why did they have rose water? What, what was Down that? here and did some pond, had them put it, made them, had them in that water. Stand outside the road there and tell him, him to tell your mom what you told me. Tell your mom what you told me. I did say that. Tell your mom what you told me. Rosebeth is standing there shaking his head crying. He's shaking his head crying. And his lips are, oh, Lord, it looked like his lips were dropped down below his chin. And, whoo, his face is actually like this in heat up. Oh, Lord Jesus. What they have him doing? They're there looking for a gun. At that time, they had confessed, four of them had confessed. And then later, all four of them said that the only reason they confessed to the crime, signed a confession, was because of the pressure that had been put on them, said that they had been threatened into, into uh, signing the confessions on the crime, which, in my own uh, knowledge, it, it isn't uncommon for police officers down in that part of Georgia, in Terrell County, or at the Dawson Police Department, to use force to obtain confessions. Did you tell him you'd done it? Yeah, it's the first time when I was scared, when I got scared, and they, they kept telling me I ain't do it. And he said, you did, you got you got your own one thing, and it's on the right thing. And he pulled it pissed out. He told him, tell me the truth, and he'll shoot you. So you told him you did it? Yeah. That boy got no education at all. I don't know how much other got, the other two, but I know they ain't got that. That boy don't know the difference between a one dollar bill and a five dollar bill. Now that's right. He's your uh, He's a damn good boy. He's just he's uneducated. I believe what happened is they just got them boys all scared up and just giving them hell and everything else, and them boys might have said it. They done something like that, maybe thinking that uh, It'd be better off. The, the boys are absolute. They're scared as hell. They sure are. The white people just scared them to death. That's, that's what it amounts to. Actually, how this all come about, I don't know. Stuff over there, but uh, I just don't believe these boys done what they said. They did. There is no real evidence in this case to speak of. No fingerprints. No weapon was ever found. No money was ever recovered. Just really isn't any evidence to point to and say that these four individuals, these four black males, did commit the crime. The attitudes in the community, in the white part of the community, are such that whether they actually did commit the crime or not, whether they're innocent or guilty, there's a very good chance that they will be convicted of the crime, even though they may not have, just because they're black. What, what do you think they ought to do with those guys they got up there in the jail? I think the one that killed them should be put to death. And the ones that didn't or were there just should have several life sentences. Are you pretty sure that uh, it seems like they're the ones that did it? Yeah, it's no doubt about that, because, well, it was two people there. One of them was killed. The other one was operating yeah. the store. Yeah. Well. He, he could be wrong, couldn't he? Well, I don't know. I mean, if I'd have been there and it'd have been me, I'd have said which one of them did it. I do feel that that was something they had planned, or it would not have happened. And, and feel I that... felt it was an easy spot. I really do. Do you feel it's very likely that the suspects they have up there in jail are the ones that did it? Well, I don't feel any other way because if they hadn't, they would not have gone ahead and kept them. They evidently had something to go on or they would have never retained them this long. The suspects maintain that they're innocent and that the confessions that they did give were forced out of them. We've had a lot of people that have said they were innocent. I just can't understand to see you my life. Got my boy starved up there in jail for nothing in all this cold. They ain't done nothing now. Folks done done something out on the ground. Walking the road. That's right. Sleeping in a warm bed. Daddy sleeping up an old comfort bl old, old, old wool blanket. Laying on a hard bunk. Getting lies in there. That's what they do, getting lies. That's the way you get your lies from jail. Oh, my only thing I know to do. And that's what I've been doing, just keep on praying. 
praying to God, and I think he will set, set us free. The states served notice that they were going to ask for the death penalty in this case. They did back in the beginning. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, left up to these people, you know, like, they'll do it, you know. You know they'll do it, these young people will, because they, they ain't right. They don't have, it, it ain't no love in this kind, in this town. This program was produced by WGBH Boston, which is solely responsible for its content. It was made possible by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the National Endowment for the Arts. <laughs>